Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I'm going to walk you through the process of valuing Sabanye Stillwater stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid cap company, 4 billion market cap. They're trading at 555 a share and they have 721 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Their free cash flow looked really good in 2020 and 2021 around 1 billion a small negative in 2022 then a bigger negative in a trailing 12 months they report all their financials in South African Rand I converted the numbers to US dollars since we're looking at the ticker of the trades in the US net income is the profit or loss on the income statement is revenue minus expenses that looks better than their free cash flow it is going down though it's 1.7 billion in 2020 800 million in a trailing 12 months they might have invested a lot in CapEx in the trailing 12 months in 2022, which is why they have negative free cash flow, but positive net income. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that's pretty much flat from 2020 to the trailing 12 months. It did increase a lot in 2021 to nine and a half billion, but came right back down. They produce lots of metals, platinum, palladium, rhodium, gold, and a bunch more. So their revenue should be fairly consistent with the price of the underlying commodity. When we look at the stock price later, I'll overlay the commodity onto it to see if it tracks it or not. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that 6.6 .6 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today's weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $5.2 billion. We divide that by 721 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 724. They're trading at 555, so they're trading at a 23% discount. It is a buy according to the model, but it's a pretty risky stock. The reason their stock price gets pushed down so much is because they're in South Africa. There's a country risk premium that gets built into the stock. Same thing if they were in China or Brazil or a number of other countries. The stock price just won't get as high as it should. Even if the company has solid fundamentals. And you can see they have a really high WAC, 15%. You usually don't see a WAC that high. There are 46 companies in the same industry as Sabanya, and if they have a number in red, they're worse than median. If they have a number in blue, they're better. They have a pretty good debt to equity ratio, 0.3. That's a little worse than the median. This should be red. They have the highest dividend of all these companies because their stock price keeps coming down which increases their dividend yield. They're not doing good in free cash flow, it's a negative. The median is negative. Newman is the highest at 781 million. They rank 11th in market cap. It should probably be 10th actually. Barrick is the largest company, 34 billion. They're always gonna have really good price multiples because a stock will always be undervalued because of the country they're in. If they were in the US, their market cap would be 20, 30 billion. That's why they're trading at five times earnings and price of sales is below one, which means their revenue is higher than their market cap. When you see a price of sales of three, that means the market cap is triple the revenue. Let's take a look at their most recent investor deck to learn more about the company. You could see their assets are all over the world. They're located in Canada, the US, Argentina, France, Finland, of course, South Africa, Zimbabwe, Australia, and South Africa is their most. You can see it's all clustered in this area right here. In South Africa, they also have PGMs. They have a gold mine in South Africa. They also do a lot in catalytic converter recycling. I'm sure you've heard of catalytic converters. They're on cars. That's right here, this green, the battery metals division. Looks like they have some green in Argentina, the US, in Finland, France, and one location in South Africa. The Century Plan is their urban and secondary mining. It's good to be diversified. Because if there's lots of problems in a certain country, say Finland made it difficult for them to operate their business. Maybe people didn't like mining companies there or the taxes got really high. They still have many more operations outside of Finland. I think they started operating in 2012. Here's a chart since that time. There's a big focus on green metals and energy solutions. As you can see, all these locations they're opening up. Mount Lyle Copper Mine was this year in 2023 and then the Rail Dan Recycling location 2324. 
Here is PGM recycling, palladium, platinum, and rhodium. Those are the main ones, but there's other metals like iridium, for example. And they list their element on a periodic table. Palladium is 46. That means it has 46 protons in its nucleus. Platinum has 78 protons, etc. They're getting better in fatalities. Looks like they were the most in 2021. Now they're six. And that's just a part of doing business. When you're a mining company, there will be fatalities. It's a real unfortunate part of the business. They have a planned decarbonization pathway to 2040. Over 600 megawatts solar and wind projects. In their PGM operation in South Africa, 175 megawatts. In their gold operation in South Africa, 50 megawatts. Their solar operation, 75 megawatts. And in their wind energy location, 328 megawatts of projects. Their presentation keeps saying SA, which means South Africa, but I keep thinking it's South America. And they do have a location in South America in Argentina. Over 600 megawatts of renewable projects planned in South Africa for commercialization in 2026. The investment is 12 to 14 billion rand. I think you divide the numbers by 19 to convert to US dollars. 13 billion South African rand is roughly 700 million US dollars. Their LOM, Life of Mine, 2023 CapEx spend. This is in rand. In 2022, 1.2 billion. It was highest in 2023, about 1.6 billion. And this is their forecast up through 2068. Lots of investment in CapEx. This is for one of their PGM projects. And the success, the return on these projects is highly dependent on the price of platinum, palladium, rhodium, gold. So if those go up a lot, the return is great. It's a great ROI. But if for instance, the price of gold tanks, they could lose money on these projects. That's the risk. This chart talks about a critical skill shortage in the US. In North Dakota alone, 30,000 job openings and 8,400 unemployed workers. That's why this company has some locations in the US. There are 9.8 million open jobs in the US and less than 6 million unemployed. These numbers represent available workers per 100 job openings. So in California, where I live, there's more available workers than job openings. Are you looking for a job? Do you agree with this? Do you think there's too many job openings? Is it that easy to find a job? Nickel is a really important commodity. They produce 2,300 tons in the third quarter alone at this location. They acquired all of New Century Resources. That's an Australian company. That was in the first quarter of this year. And they're a producer of zinc. Let's take a look at their income statement. This is the first half of 2022 and 2023 in US dollars. These two columns are in Rand. So their revenue is down because the price of the underlying commodities has gone down. It's not like they produced a lot less in the first half of 2023. Revenue went down from 4.6 billion US dollars to 3.3 billion. Adjusted EBITDA also went down from 1.5 billion to 770 million. And their earnings are about half, 800 million to 400 million. EPS only 14 cents in the first half of 2023. I guess that's why the stock has been coming down. This slide talks about their balance sheet. They have 22 billion rand of cash. If you divide that number by 19, it's about 1.2 billion US dollars. Inventory 26 billion, non-current assets 124 billion. Lots of equity, 100 billion of equity. You can see their liabilities, which are these three boxes. That's about 80 billion. So they have a lot more assets than liabilities. A really strong current ratio, that's current assets over current liabilities, 3.14. Good debt to equity ratio, below one, it's 0.8. They're a big player in battery metals, the battery for cars, EVs. You can see they work with all the big companies, Tesla. I guess Tesla is the only big company in the EV space. The others are pretty small, like Lion Electric. I'm not too familiar with core power. But they do work with other big car companies like Ford. Also non-car companies like Samsung. Let's take a look at the stock on Yahoo Finance. Here's their stock price since 2013 since they started trading. You can see they did pay a dividend from 2014 to 2017. Then they eliminated the dividend. They brought it back in 2020. And they pay a semi-annual dividend. So the stock started out at about $6. Then after five years it hit its peak at 18 it came all the way down to about $3 in 2018. 
Then it ran up to $19 in 2022, and it's really been suffering ever since. Came down to $9, it did go up to 11, but since then it's just been really coming down. It did fall to a little above four. That looks like the bottom, and it's come back up. So it seems like it could be a good time to get in. Of course, there's a lot of risk with a stock like this. This green line is the price of gold, and the red line is the price of platinum. So you can see since this company started trading, gold is up 65%. Platinum is up about 11%, and this stock is also up about 11%. So gold is doing the best, up 65%. You can see how flat the green line gold and the red line platinum are. They don't move too much. This is really volatile. You see these big swings. They have a beta of 1.4, so the stock is a little more volatile than a market. Down 50% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P is up 22%. 52-week low was 4, the high is 12. It is trading above its 50-day moving average, but well below its 200-day moving average. About 6 to 7 million shares are traded each day. 11% of the company is held by institutions and only 3.5% of the shares are shorted. It looks like they cut their dividend pretty drastically because their forward dividend is 7%, their trailing is 33%, and they pay out 53% of their earnings in dividends. Here's their dividend since 2013. They started at 15 cents, raised it to 27 cents, back down to 18 cents. So it's all over the place, the dividend. Yeah, it looks like they did cut it a lot recently. It was 87, down to 81, down to 49, down to 43, down to 27, down to 11 cents. To calculate the forward dividend, you take this dividend, 11 cents times two, since it's semi-annual, and then take that number and divide by the stock price to get the yield. The trailing dividend is a sum of these two, the 11 and 27, the 38 cents over the stock price. But that still doesn't make sense because Yahoo Finance said it was like 30 something percent. 38 cents over 554. That's 6.9 percent. Let's look at the stock on Simply Wall Street. Its last price 535, 4 billion market cap, up 3 percent in the past week, down 50 percent in the past year. Let's learn a little more about the company. They operate as a precious metals mining company in South Africa, the US, Europe, and Australia. They produce gold platinum group metals, PGMs. That includes palladium, platinum, rhodium, iridium, and ruthenium. Chrome, nickel, and silver, cobalt, and copper. It owns the East Boulder and Stillwater mines in Montana. And also the Columbus Metallurgical Complex, which smelts the material mined to produce PGM rich filter cake, as well as conducts PGM recycling activities. The company is also involved in the Kroondol, Rustenburg, Maracana, and Platinum Mile operations in South Africa. Mimosa, located in Zimbabwe. The Drifontein, Kloof, and Rand refinery and cook surface operations located on the west rand of the Wit Water Strand Basin and the Beatrix situated in the southern free state. It also owns an interest in surface tailings retreatment facilities, the Marathon PGM project in Ontario, Canada, the Alter and Rio Grande Copper Gold projects in the Andes in northwest Argentina, the Hood Spruit, and the Burnstone and Southern Free State Gold projects in South Africa. They were founded in 2013, headquartered in South Africa. Simply Wall Street is really low on this one, a buck 73. They say the stock is 208% overvalued. Here's their revenue for the trailing 12 months in 2012, 16 and a half billion rand. That's about 700 million US dollars. And it grew steadily over the next six, seven years, up to 50 billion. Then it really jumped up a lot when commodity prices shot way up in 2020 and 2021, up to 172 billion. It has come down to 128 billion. The forecast is for their revenue to grow very little to 128 billion rand, which is about 7 billion US dollars. This red line is their debt, and they didn't have much debt in 2014 and 15. They added a bunch in 2017, up to 30 billion. They have paid a little down, it's down to 25 billion. But their equity is outpacing their debt. It's a lot higher than their debt currently. 100 billion of equity. They do keep a decent amount of cash on their balance sheet, almost enough to pay down all their debt if they wanted to. Here's their dividend yield. It was 4.3% in 2014. It got down to 1.8%. The stock came down a lot and the yield went up to over 11%. That was in 2021. 
and the forecast for 2025 is 4.8%. The CEO's salary is 14 million Rand, total compensation 198 million. His tenure as CEO is 11 years. In the past 12 months, there's been only insider buying, no selling. 57% of the companies held by institutions one quarter by the general public and 18% by the sovereign wealth fund. That's the South African government. They own 18% of the company. And the fund is called Public Investment Corp, 18%. The next biggest shareholder is Alan Gray. BlackRock is up there. Their employee count is increasing. It was 35,000 in 2012. It got up to 80,000 in 2022. It is down a little bit, down to 66,000. And the ticker trades on the New York Stock Exchange, Deutsche Bursa, London Stock Exchange, Johannesburg, Mexican Bolsa and Sao Paulo Bolsa. So let me know what you think. Give the video a like, subscribe, or comment below. If you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.